Greetings everyone, I'm Mar. Once again, this is my opinion. As you can tell from the title up there, I'm continuing to delve into the episodes of Everybody Loves Raymond. And here we are, the beginning of Season 5. It's going to be a two-parter. It is going to be Italy, where the Barones go overseas. Poor Italy. Before I get too far into it, just a reminder, if you want to support the channel, both the Patreon and PayPal links are down below. PayPal is if you want to just do a one-off support of the channel or a one-off request. Patreon is for recurring support of the channel. And if you join it, you will gain access to certain videos early. And you will also be able to request topics for future videos, whether it's a subject matter like what the heck happened with blue-collar workers in cinema, or it's a review like this, because this is an upcoming Patreon request as of the time I'm recording this video. As I said, this is the beginning of Season 5, so here we go, in all its purpley glory. Finally going to get to this. It's been a few weeks since I've recorded one of these due to work, but here we are. Italy. This, the teleplay was written by Ray Romano and Phil Rosenthal, and it definitely feels like it with how all the characters, except for the children, are represented, and all the little be beats. Now, part of it stems from in between seasons four and five, Phil was like, Ray, what are you going to do with the time you got off? We're like, eh, we're going to go to the Jersey Shore like we usually do. Now, why don't you go to Italy? And uh, Phil mentions on the commentary that some of the dialogue they have Deborah say to Ray at the beginning of it is, if not word for word, it's taken from the tone of the conversation they had before they filmed this season. And one line that they have Ray say is similar to what he said in real life. I'm not that interested in other cultures. What's the thing of that is like, Ray, you're Italian. Your great-grandparents came from Sicily. Italy is... Even if it's not your culture that you grew up in, genetically and familially, it is your culture. You'll find out more about yourself. Hopefully a little bit more, considering the last time they tried to find out about themselves with Italy, we found out that Boron is not their actual last name. Which, of course, is a thread that's never picked up again, but that's because it's a sitcom and something like that. Usually thrown as a joke and then not followed up on. Though it would have been interesting to find out what their actual family last name is. I mean, I know when I went on Ancestry.com and was pouring through the records, that was one interesting thing to find out all the different surnames in there. Now, the plot is that Marie, using the money she saved for all of her marriage, is going to be sending everyone on a trip to Italy, and she'll be going. They're going to be go visiting her cousin, Coletta, who lives in a little village on the outside of Rome, which the name of the city is mentioned on the commentary. It's Anguillara. And it's on a lake on the outskirts of Rome. And it's not that far, so it's a nice, a nice short drive. So nice little small town to set up shop in and then go and see the sights in the surrounding big cities. Ray is the only one that's not excited. So like his real-life counterpart, a little bit there. And that carries on through a majority of the trip. Partially due to the fact he doesn't want to go. He wanted to go to the Jersey Shore. He wanted to do other stuff. But he catches a cold from the air conditioner on the way in. So he's moping the whole time and then about halfway through is when he finally gets into the trip frank and marie you know they're the usual self going to go see italy their whole thing marie wanting to plan out everything because she paid for the trip it's her itinerary frank you know enjoying the sights at one point he does become a little bit of a romantic may i help you my dear which it's nice to see that i mean we don't see that side of frank that often but it is nice to see it and see that he actually does love marie and they're more than just a marriage of convenience because Here's Bobby. Those moments are nice. Robert, he's trying to uh, make the best of a bad situation because as we saw at the end of season four, he took Joanne's number. And by this point, everyone's found out based on what we see Mar excuse me, Deborah do at the beginning of the episode. Amy has found out somehow, and I'm guessing she's devastated, but it's like, just because he's talking with her doesn't mean he wants to get back with her. I mean... I still talk with one of my exes. I mean, that one took a few years until we got back to that step because of something that happened at the end that I'm not going to go into, but we still talk with her on occasion, but it's not like we're going to be like that ever again. But I also do get from recent stuff, I'm not going to go into why Robert would be feeling mopey the way he is. It's one of those ways you got to figure out a way to take your mind off the situation. Of course, this is a situation of his own choosing. I mean, I'm going to probably save a majority of this for two episodes time when we get to meant to be but 
you were with Amy again. Why did you have to pick up that? And then, of course, we get this one where he meets Stefania, his other love interest, which their meeting scene is pretty nice. I mean, as he calls it, the Thunderbolt. So it's like, ah, oh, it would have been interesting. And of course, their romance carries on for a little bit in this season, and then it goes into the dumper. But let's see how many episodes time that is in. Um, uh, buh, buh, buh. That's not until episode 17. And then in episode 21 is when they all gang up on him, which I'm going to go into that when we get there. But that will be a fun episode to talk about. And, of course, with that, we also, with the Italian girl comes the Italian father, which he's, whoa, excellent character. It's the character of Marco, which will be a recurring character throughout the rest of this season and a little bit into the next season. Now, for all the scenes that take place in Anguillara that are outside, they actually went on location in Italy and filmed there in July of 2000. And all the interiors they filmed when they came back. Now, because they cast some of the Italian actors there, such as Silvana De Santis, who plays Coletta, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, Pierino Mascarino, who plays Giorno, who is Coletta's husband, they had to bring him over. And they do a pretty good job, and they add some authenticity to uh, the characters from Italy. Uh, Santis is not really much on her filmography, but uh, Pierino... He plays Jacques in Missing in Action, and he played Father Gianni in Tears of the Sun, so he has had some other stuff. Now, Alex Menes, who plays Stefania, she's not Italian. According to the commentary, she's Romanian-Mexican, which is a very interesting combination. But because of her mixed genes, she at least looks the part and can pass for Italian. So that's the important part there. Uh, she played Tony in Mean Streets, Snooze in uh, Shawshank Redemption, and... Oh, hold on, wrong one. I went down a little bit, sorry. She's with Sarah and Selena. Teresa Morales in Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. That was a recurring role. Now it was her father, the character who played her father, David Proval, who was Tony in Mean Streets and Snooze and Shawshank Redemption. I was about to say, wait a minute. And of course, he was Richie in The Sopranos, which is the role that they bring up because Phil's the one that brings it up, but he saw the episode where Richie gets killed off. Spoilers for those of you who haven't watched all the through The Sopranos, but it is casting news. When they saw that, he's like, ah, oh, thank goodness, he's available. They went to go get a hold of him, and they finally got a hold of him, and rest is history. And David, he plays a very good, a little bit of a stereotypical, overprotective Italian dad. I mean, even going as far as getting a shovel when he catches Robert and Stefania on the couch. But, of course, this is Italy, so it's probably going to be a little bit more conservative when it comes to stuff like that. You kissing my daughter, prepare to die. I know that's more of a Spanish accent, but you get the point. And there's a scene between him and Robert in the second half of the show where it's kind of a tribute to the Godfather. You know, I'm an honorable man. My intentions with your daughter are honorable. Frank says something in the background that everybody hears. <laughs> but it's pretty good. Some of that will come up in the, again in a later episode. And, of course, some of the settings that they bring up in real life. Uh, Marco's Gelada is located in the building opposite Ancoletta's house. Uh, Rain Debra's balcony is right above that. They added all the flowers you see on the streets. They were lucky enough to get uh, a lot of the places closed down in Rome and Anguillara. So they could film a lot of the big scenes like the Spanish Steps. Of course, all the exteriors they had to film in six days. So it's kind of a rush. And it does... It is filmed a little different as a result, but that adds to it, where it has more of that cinematic quality, and they're allowed to flex their uh, cinematography muscles a bit more, like a shot where, in the scene where Ray and Marie are walking through the town, we see the crane shot go up, so it's a nice little shot there, shows that it's more than just a sitcom when it comes to this spot. And that's, of course, right around the same time in the episode where Ray actually starts to, like, oh yeah... And, be, and to add to some of the humor after Ray has finally realized that he likes it there, him and Deborah have a romantic montage, but it's a parody of the one that was earlier where Stefania and Robert have a loving one, which there is some comedy, like the boat thing tipped back because Robert's big. But he cannot go without hurting his wife. It's like no matter what, which adds to it. And then, of course, the ending shot I'm not going to mention here, but it is a nice little way to end the episode. And all in all, Italy Part 1 and 2 is a pretty fun two-parter. I mean, on the DVD, it's shown in one part. And on the commentary, they do mention where, if you're watching it in whole, it would be split in two in syndication. Which, if I remember right, is how I saw it. 
And it's definitely one of the episodes of Season 5 that you should watch, and definitely one of the better episodes that begins a season. Technically, like I said a lot, this could have been in any one, but I think Season 5, definitely the best part to put this one. You have all that history from before, and then you have all the history that's going to follow, and of course it sets the stage for some of the stuff that happens in the later part of the season, so there is that. It does allow them to go a little bit outside the box when it comes to how they filmed the episode and how they played it back. Nah, guest stars are pretty good. Nice little mini arcs for a lot of characters. Uh, Frank and Marie are probably the least built on that one, but we even see that Frank is enjoying where he's at. I'm a very lucky man. As he puts it, and of course that part has a callback to season two when uh, Robert and Ray had to sleep in the same bed. And of course Ray has the biggest character arc when it comes to enjoying where he's at. And then of course the thing with Robert, which is going to develop into further episodes, which I'll rant on the main implication there when we get to there. But overall, Italy definitely comes with the Mars stamp of approval. And, of course, the next episode is going to be one of my favorites of this season, especially just from the setup. And if you've seen my uh, Peter Ball 4 tribute, you should know this one because it's one of the moments that's shown at the very beginning of the episode. Till next time, guys.